Today, we've got the top 10 climbs in the US of A. And we used a very strategic, very coordinated, and well, actually, we didn't do any of that, but I did put together a slamming list of some great climbs, cool spots to check out when you hit those climbs. So let's get into it. First up is Mount Lemon, which is located in sunny Tucson, Arizona, smack dab in the middle of the desert. Now, Tucson sits around 2,000 feet in elevation, but Mount Lemon tops out at over 9,000 feet. So you're gonna wanna bring a jacket for the ride down because it's over 45 minutes long to descend that long and sometimes super cold descent. Now, the conditions change considerably up top, but down bottom, it is beautiful views of cacti. It's consistent grade on the climb in almost year round perfect sunshine shine weather. It makes it one of the best climbs that we've got in the US. If you make it to the top, you have to hit the cookie cabin. They have cookies that are the size of your head. And after two hours of climbing, they're absolutely delicious. Now, if you're one of the gravel kings or queens out there, search around the web for the ultra top secret gravel route up the backside of Mount Lemmon. Just watch out for the rattlesnakes. I'm serious. Next up is Brass Town Bald. Now, having been to the Peach State, yes, Georgia is nicknamed the Peach State. One of my favorite races I did as a pro was the Tour de Georgia. The roads of Georgia are impeccable. The hospitality of the people there are off the charts, but the climbs are tough. My memories of Brass Town include wild and crazy fans crowding the very narrow roads with riders' names all over the ground, just like the Tour de France, the twisty upper section, completely lush, green, and tree covered. It's really in the middle of nowhere. The climb starts out at about 3,000 feet and gains almost 1,500 feet. It's straight up and it's really steep at times, which made for some incredible photos and some incredible racing, but some really sore legs too. Before and after, you gotta hit the Sunrise Grocery Store. Grab a sweet potato pie, a Coke, and if you're there in the summertime, you should probably grab a peach too. Mount Washington is an absolute monster of a climb. Located in the heart of the White Mountains in the state of New Hampshire, this mountain is notorious for its erratic weather. It's the tallest climb in the northeastern United States, topping out at just under 6,300 feet. And from the top, you can see five states. You see New Hampshire, Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, and New York, and on a nice day, even up into Canada. Hey. Eh? The climb itself is tree covered at the bottom, but becomes very exposed at the top. It does even have a little dirt in there to get your fix. Friend of the show, Tim Johnson, rode his fat bike up this climb in the middle of winter. Travis Pastrana, famous driver, race car driver, has raced his car up this as well. The annual Mount Washington hill climb takes place every August, and for the quickest rider, it'll take around an hour, but there's no relief, literally. No false flats. The climb is steep, averaging 12% all the way to the top. It's especially brutal right at the peak. The weather at the top's super crazy, so be prepared and make sure you have all of the small gear ratios that you ever could bring. I've been told by many friends that 33-33 is not enough for mere mortals. It's steep. Located in beautiful Southern California, we have Mount Baldy. Now having ridden this at several training camps as my time as a pro road racer, and then having raced it at the 2011 Tour of California with some of the best riders in the world, this climb is a doozy, as we would say. It's completely exposed, and then there is a lot of sunshine on your back, beating down, super scorcher. It's an out and back, meaning you have to go out and then you have to come back down the exact same side. We'd always stop about halfway up the climb at Mount Baldy Village, which is just about getting right to the hardest part. We'd fuel up on a bunch of stuff, get back on the bikes, don't wait too long and let the legs get all grumbly because from there, it's 9% all the way to the top. So be warned. Mount Evans is located in Colorado on the front range of the Rocky Mountains. It is the King Kong of climbs in the United States. There is the yearly Mount Evans Hill Climb, which is also known as the Bob Cook Memorial. Bob won it six times and he was a huge talent, but unfortunately at 23 passed away from a brain tumor. Although his legacy lives on through the event, all of his rivals say that Bob was such a gifted rider, really turning the screws on his rivals between 10 and 14,000 feet. And having raced in China in the highest of mountains there, racing at 14,000 feet, I can tell you, is a heck of an achievement and is a whole nother can of worms. 
Mount Evans also happens to be the USA's highest paved road at 14,264 feet. This climb is a whole day out. The top riders in the world on Strava go just under two hours. What an experience. If you guys love big climbs, definitely put Mount Evans on your list. Independence Pass in Colorado is super pretty. It makes the list basically on that alone. The climb starts out at just under 8,000 feet and tops out at over 12,000. Its friendly neighbor just down the way is called Cottonwood Pass. Now that is a maintained dirt road climb. You could use your road bike on it, no problem, but if you combine those two like I did back in the day at the Tour of Colorado, I can tell you it will leave you with some spicy legs at the end of the day. The mind-blowing descent off of Independence will drop you back into the mountain town of Aspen, Colorado. It's fast, it's narrow, it's absolutely gorgeous switchback descent that keeps you on your toes, but the payoff is incredible food, wine, culture, and vibe of beautiful Aspen, Colorado. Mount Diablo is located just over an hour from San Francisco. It is a narrow tree covered climb that feels like a major back road, not even close to a huge city like San Francisco. It's located inside Mount Diablo State Park and the climb has featured in the Tour of California on several occasions. I've scouted this climb personally several times over the years and the views from the top are what make it on this list. It will absolutely blow your mind. The climb basically starts at sea level and brings you up to 4,000 feet. It should take you around an hour or so, but it's all worth it when you get to the top for that amazing view. Go inside, grab a snack, fill up your water bottles, maybe grab a soda if you're cracked, then hightail it back to the awesome city of San Francisco. Mount Mitchell is less than 20 miles from the super cool city of Asheville, North Carolina. It is the tallest point on the East Coast, right around 6,500 feet. And when you ride it, you'll be on one of the most incredible bike routes in the world, the Blue Ridge Parkway. Seriously, guys, the scenery is incredible, amazing, impeccable, and the tunnels, yes, tunnels, on your way up through the parkway will keep you smiling, but you definitely wanna get some lights on your bike because the tunnels are dark. But for the climb itself, it is a twisty little thing, averaging around 4% and taking about two hours. You wanna definitely save some energy in your tank because the last 20 minutes of Mount Mitchell get real steep. But the lookout cannot be put into words. This is a totally different experience than the climbs we were talking about in Colorado or the California stuff. This is the East Coast baby, and it is a climb in its own category and easily worth a spot on our top climbs list. Figarola is another climb that I absolutely love. Located super close to a little slice of Dutch culture in Solvang, California, it'll make you feel super Euro. And that's exactly how I'd describe the climb as well. It's probably not our most epic or biggest climb in the United States, but because it would make for such an awesome day with your crew, and the roads are some of the best that I've ever ridden on, it's on the list. Now, tons of pro teams over the years have called Solvang home to their preseason training camps. And Los Olivos, a town not so far away, is also means you'll be right in California wine country with awesome riding all around you. The climb itself starts around 1,200 feet and goes up to 4,500. The fastest time on Strava is around 45 minutes with an average grade of about 6%. The climb's incredible and it's one of my personal favorites, but the atmosphere in that area is even more reason to ride it as if you needed one. I have to include my home state's tallest mountain, Mount Greylock. For us New Englanders, it's a pretty mean climb. I'd advise you to come out during peak foliage, which is September or October. Your mind will be blown. It is so pretty. The climb itself takes about 40 minutes and averages 6%, and it tops out around 3,500 feet. When you're done, you can get some seriously good food and take in some exhibits, if that's your kind of thing, at the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, which is just minutes away from the base of Greylock. This is a nice selection of some pretty sweet climbs that we've got in the United States. Whether you like the mountains of Colorado, the west coast of California, the hospitality and kindness of the south, or you like the northeast where I'm from, there is something for you here in the US. 
So drop us a line in the comments section. I'd love to know what some of your favorite climbs are in the US of A.